remember when all the influencers were doing those like Vogue Beauty Secrets parody videos or like videos in the style of the Vogue Beauty Secrets. I'm gonna do that today. Let's just show you the setup. Usually I do it in natural lighting, but if I do that, and I, oh. This is a torch that my mum uses. It's magnetic. She clips it into the inside of her van. This is my spider plant. As you can see, like it's actually multiplying. So if anyone wants a spider plant cutting, hit me. The freak up. So let's just get straight into skincare and all that. I've actually filmed the intro to this already and it was horrendous. I put my hair up in a claw clip. Oh my God. No, thank you. Yeah, again, apologies for the setup. It's not, it's not super set. I'm gonna translate what I just said. I think I just said, Apologies for the setup. Sorry, I know it's not soups the set. I don't know why those words didn't exit my mouth, but that's what I intended to say. First and foremost, we have our Aquafor. UK babes, UK girlies, I think you have to get this off Amazon. When I visit my friend in Spain, I buy it there. That's happened once, I don't know why I'm saying that like it's a regular thing. Well, let's be honest, given the price of trains, probably cheaper to fly to somewhere in the EU, buy some Aquafor and fly back than to get a train into your nearest Sephora or something. I don't even know if they sell it in Sephora UK. We've only got like two Sephoras anyway. <laughs> So I thought for fun I'd look up some train prices in the UK so that we can see that I'm really not exaggerating for anyone that has not taken the train in the UK recently. Fun is a very loose term there. <laughs> um, love this. It's better than Vaseline in my opinion because it hydrates and then locks it in. I find Vaseline just locks it in. So if you have dry lips, it just locks in dryness. Love. 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 Holy grail. I normally am one of those people with lip balm where I just apply it to my lips. This, have you ever seen men applying lip balm and they just go like, Literally me. So usually I start with her. Skincare. I do a whole load more at night, but in the morning I just apply Therabe. Does anyone actually know how this is pronounced? Because in Spain they pronounce it ter Therabe. Cerave? I don't know. Cerave? 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 Like everyone pronounces Cerave differently. I apply this. This is so embarrassing. And I apply kind of Six and a half hours later. And you'll notice my face is incredibly red. Is there anything we can do about this? Well, sort of kind of. Will we have to wait until later on? Well, yes. So unfortunately, this is what you're dealing with. SPF. Now, you may notice, although you can't really tell in this lighting. Somebody lied to her several times. I am Ginge AF. At all times. I use the Bondi Sands, the Australian Tan Daily Moisturizing Face. It's a 50 plus very high protection UVA, UVB fragrance free water resistant lotion. It also has vitamin E, 72 hour hydration, suitable for sensitive skin, and it's Australian made, and there's a kangaroo there, so you know that it's Australian made. So I use this all year round. And I just can't be asked. I mean, there's, I think there's the Roach Pussy does one, and it's like 15 pounds or something. You know, there's like expensive skin kits, super goop, all of that. Translation number two of the video. The point I was trying to make is there are expensive sun creams, and you can buy them, but they're expensive, so why would you? The point being, this sun cream works for me, and I think it's under a tenner, which is pretty good if I, given that I use it all year round, do you know what I mean? If I was only using it like once a week, maybe I'll get an expensive one. It's white when you apply it, so I don't know how this would work for any skin tone that isn't literally translucent. Or in my case, tomato red, oh my god. And I normally do my neck, but my skin is extra dry today, so the average amount of product that I use is just not carrying down. You may be asking, has the UK seen any sun since um, October? The answer to that question would be no. Well, no. Well, uh... However, and I tell the story a lot, when I was eight years old, I was with my dad sailing and I got sunburned in the middle of a thunderstorm. Because it's because not it's about, about the sun, the sun. No, it's about it's the about UV the radiation. Somebody come get her. And then I wash my hands. And I will do this after almost every single step in my skincare. Because I am a bit of a clean freak and I'm a bit of a germaphobe, to be honest. Post -pandemic, Post pandemic, it really popped really off. off. That was a lot of peace. Now for Christmas, Queen's mice. I did get given the Sikapair. Sikapair. I get really anxious I'm pronouncing it wrong because I don't know why I'm just terrified of being embarrassed. Even though that's literally the story of my entire this is the tiger grass color correcting treatment and this is basically like an anti-redness thing so that's what this does it's dr yart dr yart plus i really like this stuff but it doesn't last i don't think it's like a color corrector it's like part of your skincare not part of your makeup so i think herein lies the difference also here endeth the lesson this is my final step of skincare my chin gets really red it kind of looks like i'm just like one of those old men that props up the bar you know just like i have this really red bulbous chin so i literally just apply it with my fingers it's skincare and i just think skincare you should apply with your hands anyway honestly i don't know i'm not sure i would repurchase this product because i also think it's quite expensive i think it was like nearly 20 quid i also saw somewhere recently that you're supposed to like let your 
stuff dry in between each step and I just like don't do that because I have dry skin and so I just assumed like why would you do that? Okay next step I take my beauty blender and I got a pink one because the orange ones are more expensive. I think this is actually just Superdrug like own brand and I just wet her with warm water. I don't really know if it's supposed to be warm or cold and I'm not sure that it matters and then I just literally <laughs> squeeze the water out of her and that's her sodden. Now here's where the elf sponsorship doesn't come in. I use the elf Power Grip Primer. Love the colour, so fun. I've had this for like like a month and a half and it's already so depleted. She's ozempic. So depleted. And now I just do what? <laughs> Somebody come get her, she did. The way you're supposed to apply this is actually that you're supposed to pat it into your skin. You're not supposed to like rub it like this, which is what I was doing. You know how men apply aftershave or cologne or whatever the fuck they do? Like that scene from Home Alone where he's like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, so then this is supposed to dry for 30 seconds. Okay. It's supposed to feel tacky. It just doesn't. And it's nothing like that. She's nothing of the sort. And she's nothing like that. She's nothing of the sort. Then you try not to have a literal like breakdown because your baby has it all in your face. Oh my gosh. Barack Obama said no. Where's that even from? Elf sponsorship check. It's the Elf Halo Glow liquid filter. You can just put this underneath a full face of foundation or you can use this as a foundation. And I'm a light coverage girly i apply this directly to my face comme si comme ça and then once i look stripey i just kind of go like this bat that shit around all the areas and then my face looks a little bit yellow again you cannot see that in the lighting but you can in the mirror and then i literally just pummel my face until it's all kind of soaked up into this and no longer on my face just kidding until it's blended in and i also blend it down my neck okay that's literally blended in as much as i can be bothered to do so next step is concealer but i do use the glossier stretch concealer as you can see in shade g12 i did read recently you should have like a peachy undertone to your concealer oh i just got blinded by the light and so i just get a fuck ton and i just literally go like this i have the like bluest under eyes ever and i don't know if that is a pale goral thing and i don't know how to get then what i do is i take the pointy end of this so the next step is blush and highlighter. I use this, it's from Unico. It's actually a Ukrainian makeup brand. It's like a putty, basically. It's like unbelievable. Like it's such a good, and it's such an aggressive color, but it's like a putty blush. It's actually many hours later and I'm editing this. This is a Ukrainian brand called Unico. I will link their website below. They do really great products. And this blush is like, it's like a putty, but it kind of also feels quite powdery on your hands. It's very weird. I don't know what the formula is, but I, I've never seen anything like it. And basically you kind of have to warm it up in the pot before you then like get some and apply it to your face and it comes off as incredibly pigmented and then once you actually blend it in it like blends down to nothing and then you can like build it a bit and i just kind of go like this onto this part of my face because again i saw somewhere that this was the best part to do it and then i just blend it out and it's really really pigmented and then it kind of disappears into your skin so you can kind of build it a bit and sometimes i put a bit on the bridge of my nose as well let's be honest i don't really need to go for the sunkissed look because i constantly look sunkissed what with being Jean -jean. And I, oh. Let's focus please. Highlight is from the same brand, it's from Unico and this is in the shade Silk and I just apply it to the high points of my face with my fingers, not with my beauty blender. Okay, so once that's all done, I use the NYX, the brow glue in medium brown because they don't really have a ginger shade. And I just comb my eyebrows backwards and then literally just comb them up. I had PTSD with my eyebrows because I had a complex about having like a bad makeup phase when I was in secondary school. So I refused to ever try my makeup and then I just had awful, awful brows. And that was and Coachella, that was the vibe at the time. So naturally I went to edit the final portion of footage that I have that was filmed on my phone rather than on my camcorder because my camcorder died. And naturally the audio did not work. So I'm actually going to be doing a voiceover. Slay. However, apologies. Um, obviously something technically had to go massively, massively wrong. Or this would nay be a video of mine. Would it? Yeah. Okay, so first what I did was started with my bare face and truly I think mascara like brings my whole makeup look together. Here's me doing an incredible impression of fucking Mad Eye Moody and then I literally ripped out all of my eyelashes and I managed to do this on both eyes despite having never done this in the entirety of the like decade that I've been wearing mascara. But literally this is me, the state of shock, it hurt so much and I stepped on a bee in the summer and that was pain. Then I take this white mascara, it's like a mascara primer from Longcom and I 
coat my eyelashes with that. I've just started doing it recently. I used to do it just for like when I would do like a fuller makeup look, but to be honest, I just have done it a lot recently. I think probably because my mascara is running out and I need to buy a new one. But I love it. It's a freebie I got ages ago. And then this is just the Maybelline Sky High. I used to use the Glossier Lash Slick. And I think this is kind of like a dupe for that basically, but the Glossier one, it was just 15 pounds. And I just was like, eh, that's a bit too much. And this is me wishing I could pose a bit better. And this is the final look of my makeup. It's very natural, but I like it. Anyway, love you. Bye.